Comedy. Now, as I mentioned, otherwise known as Pig is its book about bullying and is a book that makes no attempts to hide the horror and the viciousness of what it feels like to be bullied. So it can be a really hard and confronting book to read. And I've tried to use comedy in the book to make it more bearable and also because it's one of Morgan, the main character's main coping strategies and how he deals with the horror of his life. Now, the first way comedy is used in this book is comic relief. Now, a lot of you have or will study the play Macbeth. And in the play Macbeth, you have a scene colloquially known as the Porter's scene, where a porter comes on, makes a lot of rude and satirical comments about pieces of firewood, and then in fact um, has a comic scene with Macduff. Now, done properly, and I've seen it done properly, that scene is rip-roaringly funny. And it's a really welcome relief because the scene immediately before it is a murder and the scene immediately after it is the discovery of a murder. Now, that's the form of comic relief that you do see in a few scenes in Pig. There's two main character groups that provide that comic relief. One of them is Botox Girl and the Not Yet Ex-Boyfriend who are Morgan's version of, or Morgan's opinion of, Marfield's version of keeping up with the Kardashians. And they are irredeemably vulgar and, in fact, very funny. Botox Girls, my favourite comment of Botox Girls is later on in the book where she comments that Shane and I are engaged and I'm not even pregnant, which is clearly true love, Marfield style though I'm not sure, as Morgan points out, that the not-yet-ex-boyfriend is aware of this engagement. Another way that comic relief is used is Morgan's constant battles with the PE teacher. Now, I'm going to read you the first two of those rounds. Um, also, it's an excellent example, not only of comic relief, but of the other type of comedy that you see in this book, which is dark humour. I'm going to read this scene, and then we'll discuss both that form of comedy. Chapter 2. Mum made me read out the horoscopes while she was cooking breakfast. Mine said I was going to have a positive and productive day. People who write horoscopes are lying bastards. The PE teacher is the same one as last year. Summer hasn't improved his attitude. Or mine, come to think of it. This could be a problem as I have four PE lessons a week. Catch the ball, Lodi. For the next 30 minutes, I try and fail to play basketball. Game ends when I manage to catch a hard-thrown ball in the face. Considering the current state of my mouth, this really hurts. Teacher is not impressed. Neither am I. It's just not good enough, he says. Oh, I agree, I reply. Watch your mouth. Pass me a mirror, or the blood should make it easy to spot. Don't be smart, Lodi. Yes, sir, I say. Didn't realise purpose of education was to remove smartness. Glad we've cleared up that little misunderstanding. There's some stifled laughter, and one of his best students, rooster red hair and obsessed with shooting things, tosses me a grin. The PE teacher scowls, round one to Morgan. It's so nice that teachers can't hit you anymore, and even if he reports me, I reckon I've won. Teacher doesn't report me, just sets me up to practice passes with the number two bully. He's about Stormont's height, build and disposition, and I think he resents his number two rating. Round two to the PE teacher. Now, there are about eight of these scenes throughout the book, eight of these rounds between Morgan and the PE teacher. Some of them are completely comic, some of them are in fact very dark and a number of them are like this one, a mixture of the two. Because what you see here is not only the comic relief and in fact Morgan's smart aleck mouth, but also some of the dark humour that perpetuates throughout the entire book. 
Now, dark humour is a phrase that was first coined by André Breton in 1935 in France when he published an anthology of, in fact, dark humour. And it's generally thought to be humour that tackles subjects that people do not find funny, like death, bullying, often taboo subjects like sex or drugs or racism. And it's very popular amongst people who face that sort of thing daily. It's very popular amongst police officers, um, army people, ambulance drivers. And in fact, it's very popular amongst teenagers. And it's one of the reasons why I included it so strongly in the book. You've got a lot of examples of it in, in fact, these two pages I've just read here. The opening mindset, I was going to have a positive and productive day. People who write horoscopes are lying bastards. That's fairly classic dark humour. I think my favourite dark humour comment in this book is happens near the end of the book when Stormont is actually kicking Morgan when he's down and Morgan comments, then he put the boot in. On reflection, I don't think the closed shoe policy is a good OH&S decision. And that's really classic dark humour. It takes something horrible and puts a twist on it to make it funny without actually lessening the horror of it. And one of the reasons I use this through the story is because it gives a lightness, even if that lightness is very much tinged with darkness, to what's happening to Morgan. And Morgan himself uses it. He actually says so. Stormont's been beating him up. And Morgan comments, would have thrown up, I think, except that I missed breakfast. Good thing my sister nicked all the Pop-Tarts. And yes, making stupid like jokes like that does help because it gave me something to think about apart from the fact I was slumped against a locker in the space between two buildings while students carefully walked on the other side of the path. So Morgan's aware of the situation he's in and he's using humour to deal with it both internally and externally. Externally, his humour often gets him in trouble but internally, it's clearly a really effective survival strategy. And that's humour in pig.